Welcome back, boys. In this episode, we're going to hurt some feelings, but that's okay because facts over feelings. Now, I'm in Wisconsin, and it is late January, which should be peak winter, and it has been. We've had two feet of snow in the past couple weeks. The snowmobile trails opened everywhere in the southern half of the state, and I went riding every day they were open. It was awesome. However, then they closed, and yesterday it was raining, again, in late January, and it looks like for the next two weeks, we're going to have temperatures in the upper 40s. So all this snow is going away. Now, this is not normal. And I am concerned because I like snowmobiling. I like the winter. It's one of my favorite times of the year. And it looks like things are getting worse. So the purpose of this video is to help stop the spread of misinformation. Now, I have seen a shift in these opinions over the past few years. Initially, people denied that climate change was happening. And to respond to that, I just want you to go Google glacial recession. What you're going to find are images of a top view that show how glaciers have changed and receded over the years. Now, this could be a huge conspiracy by the libs to control the whole free world. I don't know of any glaciers in the whole world that are currently growing right now because the earth is warming. Now, denying the existence of climate change or it actually happening is getting less frequent. And instead, people are saying, well, you know what? The climate's been changing for millions of years, blah, 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 blah. You know what? You are correct. This is a history of the Earth's temperature timeline. I'm a very visual learner, and this is the graphic that I usually send people to talk about this subject. You can see that as I scroll down, the temperatures are changing, but they're changing gradually. But when you get down to the bottom, right around 1900 in the Industrial Revolution, we see a huge difference in the rate of change. So it's not the fact that the climate is changing that's concerning people. It is the rate of change or the speed at which it is happening. This is unprecedented. And people will say, well, this is, you know, we don't have that really good of a data. Yes, we do, because we have tree rings, ice core samples, and all sorts of ways to figure out what our climate was like in the past. I want to share some more information with you. This is a graph by UW-Madison showing the length of time Lake Mendota has been frozen over. And this goes back to around the 1880s. Now you can see that year to year it changes. Sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer. But when you look at the trend line, you can see that it's definitely going down and the lake is freezing later and breaking up earlier. The only thing I'm trying to push in this video is to get us all on the same page. And then maybe we can decide what to do next. I feel like there's this divide of people who just don't want to hear this. And if you're a snowmobiler, you should really care about this stuff because if the snow goes away, so does snowmobiling. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. Yes, get mad. It's not snowmobiling that's a problem. It's not your greasy triple or your two stroke. The reality is, is that corporate America puts out like 70 to 80% of the emissions. Our hobbies and lifestyles are just such an insignificant drop in the bucket, but they're trying to push the burden of being green and improving the environment on regular people, which is stupid. It needs to go the other direction. Personally, I think it's greener to drive an old snowmobile than it is to buy a new one. When you look at the environmental impact of a new vehicle, whether it be a car or a boat or a sled, buying an old one and restoring it is almost always better for the environment than buying something new. You know, in grade school, we learned reduce, reuse, recycle. That justifies my gearhead lifestyle, okay? So I've taken that to heart. Most of the stuff I drive is pretty old. I think my newest car is from 2004. Oh shit, it's 20 years old. <laughs> the point of this video is not to make anyone feel bad about their choices or tell you what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm not an expert. But those people that pretend they're experts on literally everything and they are somehow smarter than a microbiologist, they're constitutional scholars, they're geopolitical historians, and now they're climate scientists, those people just reek of insecurity to me. And as a man who's confident in who I am, I will freely admit I don't know what the hell I'm talking about half the time. But if you're the kind of dude that claims you're smarter than literally everyone, to me, that's a sign of compensation. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Agree, disagree, leave a comment. I'll try to engage. I appreciate all of you guys. Pray for snow, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.